What is up guys, Liam here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be uh, messing around and build a ship to Survivor's Island again. And today we are on the SS Beichimo. So this is my rendition of the SS Beichimo. It's a uh, German-made, English-owned cargo ship that got lost in the Alaskan Arctic uh, sometime after, I think maybe before or after World War II. I cannot remember. Um, Looks like I need to fix the lighting here, but I've nearly got this done. I have the game set to night right now. Um, and I think, uh, I think I did a decent job at this for what it is right now. We can go and look around a bit first. So here up on the bow we have a bunch of detail like the anchor chains, whatever this is up here. Um, these are the vents here. You have the things that you get attach the mooring ropes to. Uh, the stairs here, which kind of cut into uh, this walkway uh, in here, and uh, you can go through those doors and up through here to go into this level, which is a bit dark in here. I was testing it. I was testing some of the lights out earlier, but it looks like um, might have to set it today for this sinking. So I think that'll be better. Um, but yeah, we are gonna sink this, of course. Anyways, uh, in here we have the. Uh, the anchor chain room, which would, which uh, below this would be the chain locker here, but I didn't feel like making it because it's a bit too much. My model isn't exactly accurate because I do not know what the interior looks like. That's something I should probably say here. Um, I am kind of basing this off of Great Lake Freighter interior and how you know Great Lake Freighters would be, since that's what I usually make. In fact, if you guys want to see some of my other ships that I've made. Um, you can check those, but I, I might want to do some videos on those. Uh, but, anyways, in here we have like what would be cabins or store lockers or whatever. Um, going down here, you would see we have some room here to go to the forward cargo hold, which you can you saw that cargo hatch in the well deck over here. And um, we also got another cargo hold, which, uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that that's that's pretty cool, I guess. We have some cabins here or whatever. Um, going up here, we come to the middle part of the ship. I don't know what to call this. Maybe mid castle, because this is the forecastle or forecastle. I guess w this would be the mid castle, and that would be the aft castle. But up here, you have some stuff. Uh, you have some some more rooms here. I believe these would be cabins, and uh, we have the booms here. Um, this one, we have one boom here, this is the mast, and we have a secondary mast with, uh, this light here. I think the spotlight looks very cool. We have another lantern up on both of these, and this one has three booms, so that's pretty cool. Um, they're a bit big, though. Anyways, up here, there wasn't really much I could see that was up here, so I left it blank, and up here we have the bridge, where we have a telegraph, a compass, which mine looks absolutely garbage, my, and then we have the uh, helm, which I tried to do a decent job at, but I couldn't really. Uh, we have the nav lights, of course, and I think I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we have the, uh, of course, the vents because you got to be able to breathe. Not sure what these are, but I saw them and I tried my best to create them. More cargo hatches, um, more vents. Up here, not sure what this is, but I guess it's like a mini upper area. I saw certain versions had it where there was a lot of like wood furnishing all around here, and um, we also have that it would be for refueling the coal hatch, which if I were to go into, there is a coal hatch down there, but I'm not going to. We have the funnel up here, which I have it painted in the British coloring, because I've seen many different variations. Some are black, some are just plain yellow, just plain black. Some are black with like a company stripe on it, but in some of the pictures I saw it in, it had this style of funnel, so I decided to go with it, because, you know, it looks more classic. We also have the skylight here. I think I did a decent job on that. There is no glass, however, in it, which, not sure how realistic that is, but I do know there were some ships like that that didn't have glass in those. Um, I also saw this here. I think this is a tank. More, There are more vents in, over here. And the lifeboats, yes, we have the davits and the lifeboats. Um, my lifeboats aren't the best, but, you know, they're they're there, um, and you can go underneath, I guess. 
Anyways, moving back, we have all these chains here and uh, the aft turning wheel, which if you go down, there's a tiller down here. I didn't know it would be down here, so I just put a tiller. And um, we have the flagpole back here and the singular propeller, which is very big, and the small, small little rudder. Anyways, moving into the aft castle, since we've already checked out the forecastle or the forecastle and the uh, mid castle. Uh, we can actually go back down here because I left these two rooms. I'm not sure what they were, so I just used them as staircases. You can check out the aft, the aft cargo hole. Anyways, um, you know you can see that both these go into the same one because I didn't know what to do um, with them. More cabins, of course. This right here, you may notice that you can't go in there. That's because that is the coal chute, of course. Um, we have uh, these rooms in here, which I guess would be storage closets or maybe small cabins. And um, right here is the thing for the funnel, the uptake casing. Moving in here, you can see this leads us up to the um, aft castle here, which uh, you can't actually get down through here. This is just a lookway or whatever, just for the skylight. But you can see uh, we have some windows back here. This goes back out to the promenade. Uh, this goes in here. Uh, and in here we have the staircase going up to that thing. And in here, uh, I don't think I included a staircase, so I, I'm going to have to fix that. Because, of course, I'm still ironing out everything that's um, incorrect about this. Uh, we also have this boarding door here, which I saw on some pictures. But anyways, moving down back here, we have the engine room, which my engine isn't the best. Um, but, you know, I tried. It, it's supposed to look like an engine. It's not good. But in here's the boiler room, which... Anyway, and here's a boiler room. You can see some of the coal spilling out of there. Um, and it's lit up, of course. You can see the, the orange reflecting on the walls and the water. Now, the water is totally normal. I am not responsible for any deaths on the sinking. Um, anyways, yeah, that that's pretty much the interior tour. I, it's a fairly small liner, similar to my SS Cam Loops, which I no longer have. That's actually in my uh, own game. And... Um, yeah, so let's uh, actually get to syncing this thing now. So first of all, we have to weld it, which is going to lag the game a bit, because uh, it's about, you'll see here, it says that it'll create, there's only like one part missing when you weld stuff, but that's almost the part count, just add one, so it is 14,881, um, or 14,882 parts, um, so that's quite a few parts, I would say. And we're not going to click this launch button here because that creates a current. We're going to just use the old unanchor method, which I guess that makes a lot of sense for ships. Oh wait, before I do that, actually, I do want to do something. I want to go to the VIP menu and grab a balancer tool. Otherwise, this thing will immediately roll over. But I just want to see how well it floats because I actually haven't tested how well it floats. But anyways, like I said, Let's launch this baby, unanchored, and this is going to drop my FPS lower to, <laughs> it's going to be lower than my IQ. And I have negative 54 IQ, I don't know how it's that low. Um, so it's definitely stern heavy, that's one thing with my ships, most likely because of engine rooms and just the sheer amount of stuff in the back compared to the amount of stuff in the front. So I'll definitely have to add some weights up here, some more weight and stuff. And, um, it's floating decently well. Like, it's not going underwater too much. Uh, but, actually, what we could do is we could just do something like select this and then start the sinking almost, which would... I use the corroded metal because that's a sink tool, but unfortunately you have to click launch to get the sink tool, but, you know, the current isn't really fun to use. So let's, um, that's not balancing it out too much. Actually, it's starting to, but you can see it's fairly level, and I think, um, I think we should definitely take off this balancer so that way it, it'll roll over. So let's roll this thing over. I'm ready for it. Let's see which way, because it's a, right now I have it balanced out. It, it's, like, pretty even on both sides, but I'm guessing right due to this. Uh, so it'll most likely either go to right, the right, it'll most likely go to the right side, even though there's this here, but that's a lot of parts, this one, so I'm guessing maybe just that amount of weight here. Um, actually, we could just choose which side it goes over. 
and it's not really wanting to go over, I guess? So let's cause it to roll over here. Also, I specifically brought it over here because we're near ice, and um, if we go over there, you can see a few ships frozen in ice, similar to how the uh, how the Beitumo, uh got stuck in the ice. But let's uh, let's sink the ship. Let's give it a lot of corroded metal, and it will sink after that. Alright, yep, there, it's rolling over a lot now. We'll cut the power in a moment once it's starting to go under a lot, or like the boiler room's under. But you can see it's really rolling over now. And it's starting to move slightly, which I think is interesting. But there goes the entire bow, and um... I guess we can do a bow sinking. Usually I like to sink this thing from the stern just because of the weight. But let's, um, let's just add a bunch of corroded metal to make it sink real quick from the bottom. As you can see, it's starting to move down. Um, the forward, the two forward holds are starting to go under. And oof, I forgot touching it drops the FPS a lot. Uh, anyways, going under the bridge here, you can see. Oh no, there goes the bridge wing. The uh, I never get starboard and port correct. I can never remember which ones they are. But oh, it's sinking level, sort of Isle de France style. And I think that's that's the ship. And it's starting to roll back over, so let's remove the point light and spotlight. The spotlight is because of the uh, skylight, just to make it, um, just to make it seem like it was shining down light, even though it doesn't shine down that much light. But as you can see, it's sort of leveled out now, um, which is a bit interesting because it hasn't hit bottom. Anyways, let's uh, let's sink this baby for good. I know that was a bit of a quick sinking and a long tour, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far. Also, apology for any background noise. Um, oh, touching it. Eh. Especially walking through doors because you're putting your entire character inside of it, um, or flying into a surface. That will lag it a lot because it's like, it, two surfaces colliding causes a lot of lag in games. It's nearly fully under, we just need to get this last tip of the mast, and there we go. Now let's make this thing corroded metal entirely, and we'll wait for it to hit the bottom. So as you can see, um, all the detail of the bottom of the ship, all the curvature and all that, and the propeller, which kind of looks like a swastika um, in hindsight. That's probably not a good idea, <laughs> but it's the most accurate shapes. Sadly, a lot of propellers look like swastikas, and it's terrible design, but it's the most efficient. That's the worst thing. It's the most accurate, and I really don't want it to look like a bad symbol, but, you know, it just happens that propellers just look like that. Anyways, I didn't launch the lifeboats because, unfortunately, I have to weld them all together, and either they would just flop around causing lag or fly off the ship, or just not work at all, so... I chose to have them just attached to the ship. And you can see the anchors here, which aren't the best, but you know, they're, they, they exist. And it is starting to get close to the bottom now. Sinking level, of course, which is very interesting uh, to see a ship sink level. But I didn't really know how this ship would sink since I'm not very good with cargo ships. I almost considered doing, um, I almost considered, uh, driving this ship around until I remembered the part count and also how horribly it performed, so maybe I'll make an update on that small ocean liner I did where I drive it around, because that one I can drive around pretty well, and because that, it's only around 8k parts instead of 14k. Also, I'm getting dust in my throat, so I have to cough. Excuse me. Now that I got that out of the way, um, good thing I muted my microphone for that. Hopefully I did. <laughs> I had the mute button on my mic. But... As you can see, it's hit bottom now, so it's, um, now the wreckage of the SS Beijimo, which I'm not going to say it's accurate to what it would look like, but it's most likely that the Beijimo did sink because no one's been able to find it since the 60s, even though a lot of people have claimed that they've seen it. Really, the last uh, truly, like, photo reported sighting was in the 60s, so it's most likely that it sank and... 
who knows where the wreck ended up because it's in the Pacific Ocean, which is like the biggest ocean on Earth. And, well, we'll never really know what happened to it unless someone goes and looks for it. But yeah, that was my SS Beichimo sinking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of, um, build a ship to Survivor's Island. Now, another note I'll, I'll make right here is that you guys may have noticed it took a while to do these. Uh, that's because I am building all of these ships. Um, the worst part is that you would think, oh, this would be easy, but I'm, I'm opting for, instead of just the generic, oh, slide it across with F3X or do it in studio, I'm using the traditional old block building method. So you can see all these individual parts here. That is why the part count is insane. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my rendition of the ship, and um, I thank you all for watching. Oh, before I go, uh, real quick, here's the, um, oh, there goes my computer. <laughs> here's the, uh, the coal hatch, or whatever. Kind of hard to fly around in here without killing my PC, but thank you all for watching. Um, make sure to like and subscribe, I guess, if you want. I mean, you can do what you want. I know my content is the best, but I try. Anyways, I, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.